Hey, last outrider here. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what is a war scythe? Today, you will get the answer, all you Necron players or those who are just interested. Examination of the artifact designated war scythe is once again proving fruitless. The power field generated by the blade impedes all of our efforts to conduct a meaningful catalog of the weapon's inner components. It somehow grows in magnitude to match whatever force we bring to bear. The weapon is, to all intents and purposes, indestructible. What is more worrying is that the power field pulses with each attempt I make to breach it. At first, I believe this to simply be the field's energies sliding into new configurations in response to my probes. However, I now theorize that each of these pulses is actually an encoded message, a distress signal of sorts. I respectfully suggest that this outpost's defenses are not sufficient to repel a Necron attack, and that the artifact be removed elsewhere. It is possible that the Forge world of Pintos might have the resources both to conduct a more useful investigation and present, prevent the war side's forcible reclamation. Failing that, can I suggest that we arrange for the artifact to fall into the hands of the green-skinned warlords of Orkal? They are no more likely to uncover the Warside's secrets than we, and if the Necrons attempt reclamation, they may well neutralize the Orc threat for us. File Weaponry Warsize Archivist Magos Trantor, collated on H73941 of Millennium 41. <laughs> there you go. So let's get on to some the background of the war scythe. War scythes are bladed battle staves, the favored weapons of Necron nobles and their bodyguards for many thousands of years. They are incredibly cumbersome, and in the hands of a lesser creature would be of little threat. However, when wielded by a Necron's mighty mechanical frame, a war scythe is a most formidable weapon. The entropic power field that flickers around the war scythe can disrupt almost any material known to man, leaving the victim's underlying structure, be it organic or inorganic, vulnerable to the cleaving impact of the weapon. Like all Necron weaponry, the war scythe is an expression of a science far beyond mankind's grasp. Nevertheless, there is nothing mystical about its function, as there is with some Eldar technology. Indeed, if anything, a war scythe is crudely functional and composed of similar, though far more advanced and reliable components as the more ubiquitous power weapons. It has a blade, several energy field generators, and an insulated grip. But while the function of the War Scythe's elements are broadly understood, comprehension of how they function is beyond non-Necron life. There is no shortage of captured Necron technology within the Adeptus Mechanicus's stasis vaults. Indeed, there is some suggestion that some such prizes have lain there for many thousands of years. But almost every attempt the tech priests have made to reverse engineer the technology has ended in abject failure. A curious side effect of the Warside's power field 
is to render the weapon almost impossible to destroy. There are several well-documented instances of war scythes surviving direct hits from LAS cannons and even from turbo lasers with little harm to show for it. Unfortunately, this protection does not extend to the wielder, and it is quite common for a war scythe to survive a battle where its master does not. There are two distinct classes of war scythe. The first and most common of these types is wielded exclusively by the Lich Guard, the incorruptible protectors of the Necron nobility. Their war scythes are the most basic expressions of the artisan's craft, with little effort given to aesthetic refinement or customization. In a Lich Guard's hands, the war scythe is nothing more or less than a brutal instrument of battle. Its power stems only from its potential for slaughter. By contrast, the regal war scythes wielded by the nobility, the lords, nimisors, phantars, and pharons, are far much more. They are scepters of rule as they are implements of battle. Seldom are any two war scythes from this second category exactly alike. Pride is a powerful emotion in those Necrons still capable of feeling it, and to possess weaponry identical to that of a rival would be interpreted as weakness, or possibly as an insult. For two regal war scythes are identical, it is always through deliberate choice. It marks an alliance of brothers or of dynastic houses, declaring plainly the common cause between the wielders. <clears throat> regal war scythes are masterpieces of workmanship, loving creations of weapons long lost to the entropic forces of the universe. Should such a weapon be forsaken upon the field of battle, or worse, stolen, then its owner will often go to great and violent lengths to recover it. Worlds have been laid waste and planetary systems brought under siege in this cause. Some Ordo Xenos Inquisitors point to this behavior as an element of commonality between mankind and Necron. For the Imperium's forces often enter battle in order to recover an important relic. Alas, they misunderstand, as they often do when it comes to the workings of the Necron mind. A Necron word's war scythe is a tangible connection to the life he once knew. For those who desire to someday return to the flesh, it is a symbol of hope that such can be achieved. It is not a relic whose heft provokes cultural outrage, but a personal possession whose thievery provokes a very personal anger. Regardless of the wielder's rank, a Warthsize blade and power core always blazes with the heraldic color of his dynasty. Power signature colors are often shared by different dynasties. This is a throwback to the days before biotransference and shows the state of alliance between the various dynasties of that time. Inevitably, the war in heaven and the tumultuous eons that followed have done much to shatter the alliances of old. The power signatures are now, therefore, more misleading than useful. A pharaon could, of course, order the power signature of his forces changed at any time. However, the present configurations have been established for so long that, for most nobles, the notion of altering them 
is just as unthinkable as ordering that the dynastic glyphs be defaced. To Necrons, tradition is everything. Indeed, it can be argued that tradition is all that is left to them. <laughs> and now for a quote. <clears throat> this is no mere weapon. It is an expression of my right to rule and the deliverer of my royal wrath. Together, we have scoured gods from heaven and shattered the power of the perfidious Satan. Now it has come to accept your fealty or grant your death. Which do you choose? Overlord Arkanabeth to Iron Captain Grolovich. There you go. That's what a war scythe is. I hope you enjoy. Bye.